Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to round out this weekend's special selection with uh, a, a, a song request that's a bit uh, unusual. <laughs> uh, we have a request from Tim Chambers that says, Tim, the Tin Hat Trio, The Longest Night. They're a chamber music group. And this was the first song of theirs I heard, and it has always stuck with me. Chamber music is not something we've really checked out much on this channel. So, uh, yeah, I'm always down for that. We listen to a lot of metal and rock, and um, I've mentioned many times in the past, I don't mind just doing that, but my tastes are pretty eclectic and sort of being pigeonholed into the rock and metal reactor guy. Uh, it's not, it hasn't always been my plan. So I really appreciate when we branch out and check out stuff like this. Uh, that is partially why I really hoped we did pop week a while back. I, <laughs> I just really like checking out stuff that uh, is not rock and metal sometimes. Uh, a little variety, I guess. So I, like I said, I do appreciate when we get, uh, oddball stuff like this and snarky puppy, uh, what was that jazz? And, uh, you know, anytime, anytime that we have a little bit of, uh, uh, a a, brief, uh, a little bit of a refresher <laughs> from the rock and metal stuff. So, uh, yeah, let's dig into the Tin Hat Trio. The Longest Night off of the album Book of Silk. Yes, yeah, so I really dig that part. We had the one static line and the two moving lines, uh, and it was really creating this sense of uh, tense waves almost. Followed by the serenity of the plucking. Yeah. Digging into those melancholic chords every once in a while, too, just really giving us a sort of a bittersweetness. Yeah, that extra width of adding that second instrument on the same melodic line. And just those little moments of humanity where they uh, aren't attacking at the same time. Weaving in and out of harmony. Sometimes playing the same. Oh, it's just so good. Creating a little bit of space so we can get those lower note runs. Yeah, beautiful part down there, too. So we kept this middle section here, uh, allowing the lower end to have a spotlight, and we're utilizing in the higher end spotlight too. Really nice transition there.
All right, and we'll end on the uh, plucking rhythm that we saw in the second section. Yeah, I really dug that. Had a really nice uh, atmosphere all throughout. Um, the beginning, I will say, was a bit, uh, I said bittersweet. It seemed a bit upbeat and cheery, but there's definitely a darkness in there. Um, but the ending, I think, was a bit more hopeful. And uh, I, I like how that transition came about. It was almost seamless when we kind of switched to focusing on more of the uplifting chords rather than sort of the melancholic ones. Um, however, the, the strong takeaway for me here is the masterful use of only three acoustic instruments. Um, rock and metal kind of uh, don't get a lot of praise for their minimalistic approach to songwriting. Um, a lot of bands are four-piece. Guitar, bass, drum, and singer. Um, so you're only working with three pitched instruments and then your percussion. Um, so the electronic nature definitely has a bit of heavy lifting to do as far as filling space. But I think that metal and rock bands, especially when you look at smaller groups like that, don't get enough praise for creating, uh, you know, strong, heavy, space-filled music with such limited instruments. And like I said, there is a little bit of, uh, you know, work being offloaded to the electronic, the, the distortion, the volume, that's definitely going to fill up space. But you also still need some good songwriting to go along with that um, in order for the space to really fill, feel filled up, right? You can't just play random stuff on loud, distorted instruments and have it sound filled up. It's just going to sound like a chaotic mess. Um, but on the other side of that equation, we have, uh, you know, string trios, which I th think this is what this is. Um... If I can get some, no, I can't get any information. Comments are even turned off. <laughs> um, I think this is a string trio. Um, but yes, they do a fantastic job at, uh, at filling space despite being three acoustic instruments. They don't have distortion or volume knobs to help uh, amplify the sound in any way. The sound waves are only as wide as the instruments can make. So I think these guys just do a phenomenal job at controlling that and actually creating some very loud, uh, well, it's not loud, larger presence sections through very clever composition techniques. Um, you'll notice that the ending actually had a bit of uh, a swell to it. And not all of that came from dynamics as far as volumes are concerned. Um, before that, we saw what I would consider to be the solo section. We started out with the lower end instrument. Could have been a cello, I think, possibly. Um, but I, I'm not entirely sure on that. So I'm just going to stick with lower end instrument. Um, with a nice mid-range accompaniment to it. I don't remember what that mid-range accompaniment was playing, though. Um, but you had you had your bass uh, getting the spotlight there. And then I mentioned that we moved to the higher-end solo section, and the mid-accompaniment was continuing to play exactly what it was. I thought it was a really clever transition to move from the ultra-sparse, almost quiet section so that the lower-end instrument could still be heard, moving into uh, a bit of a, a volume increase and allowing the higher pitched instrument to shine a little bit in the next section while the the, the middle accompaniment continued to uh, just lay that lay down that foundation just kind of stick with what they're doing after that though uh, we saw all three instruments sort of doing their own thing uh, there was some extreme layering going on as far as musical ideas 
uh, the bass, the, the lower end instrument wasn't really playing some bass line stuff. They had a bit of a melody going on. Everybody was sort of doing melody work. Um, and because of that, it felt a bit empty. But the cool thing is, uh, something you don't really get to see too often in um, distorted instruments because of the way that distortion works uh, as far as sound waves are concerned. One of the cool things with acoustic instruments is that sound waves are multiplicative. So if you have two instruments playing the exact same note, the volume of that note is going to be larger than the two instruments uh, on their own. Uh, sort of uh, larger than some of their parts idea. Um, and we can actually see that at the end where the two higher end instrument, no, one of the, the lower end instrument and the higher end instrument actually end up start playing some specific key notes in their melody lines. They do deviate a little bit. They kind of have their own ideas going on. Um, but there are several notes that they tend to come together on and they sound bigger and the ending actually has a, a largeness to it because we have several of these key notes uh, that are shared between the two instruments and it creates this volume swell uh, and they end up filling up the space very well. They did this identical thing actually in the first section with the two higher end instruments. Um, we saw uh, they, they had their own melody lines but they did come together quite often on these key notes um, and it gave them not only the extra importance, but also the, you know, the volume swell from, uh, you know, playing them t identically, uh, or playing, sorry, playing the identical note. And, uh, I think they just, they just do a phenomenal job of controlling the space when they want to be sparse. They are sparse. Even if they have a lot of things moving on, it's not taking up a lot of space. Um, and then when they want to be big, they are big regardless of what they're doing. Uh, you know, sometimes they're going to come together to get that bigness. Sometimes they're just going to increase each individual's uh, dy volume dynamic. And uh, yeah, that's that's just, I mean, it's it doesn't really sound like much, especially when you're used to listening to music that is uh, electronically altered. Even if that's only an amp, uh, just introducing distortion and volume uh, is going to change the way you think about composition and also about uh, sometimes performance. It's one of those things that you don't really think about too often because if you want to be loud, you just turn your volume up in rock and metal. But if you want to be rock, you if you want to be loud in an acoustic section, especially if you want to fill up space, uh, sometimes just being loud isn't enough. You're going to have to <laughs> team up. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to group up with someone else to to sort of achieve that same uh, fullness in the sound sphere. So, yeah, it's one of those things that you don't always think about when it comes to acoustic writing. But I think that these guys knew exactly, I mean, everybody, this kind of goes, tr this is true for most bands. But they know exactly the limitations of their instruments and how to overcome those limitations uh, through working with the rest of their bandmates. It's, like I said, it's kind of true for most bands, especially if you've been doing it for a while. Maybe not especially true on your debut EP, your debut single. Uh, maybe maybe things are a bit rough around the edges. But anytime you get some experience, you're going to learn how to better work within the limitations and strengths of the instruments that you're writing for. So, yeah. Like I said, not necessarily... Um, exclusive to, to this trio, but I do really enjoy that they um, are showcasing it so well. The intro I'm still a little uh, iffy on. It almost seems to work inside of a bit of dissonance, and at first I thought it was... It almost, it almost seems intentionally out of tune. We're not really working with notes outside of a chord as far as two instruments that seem to be slightly out of tune. <laughs> um, the rest of the song was gorgeous, but that, that intro just... Uh, it's got to sit with me for a little bit so I can uh, better think about it and, I don't know, come back to it. For a song that's so gorgeous, it's kind of uh, weird to have these... Uh, mixed emotions about the intro and kind of how that all fits together. So, 
All right, those are my thoughts on uh, the Tin Hat Trio. The song is The Longest Night. This is where you guys come in. The Longest Night. This is where you guys come in. No, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this. And also let me know if we should have more chamber music, more string music, what you guys think about doing that. Like I mentioned, I don't mind uh, basically primarily focusing on rock and metal. It has been a phenomenal journey. And we have just scratched the surface. If my spreadsheet my request spreadsheet is anything to go by we still have at least 600 probably at least 600 bands to go uh for a first time listen and that doesn't even count that most bands have multiple facets to them so i have years of material ahead of me and of course in those years new music will emerge so i i could do this forever and not run out of music just within rock and metal to check out but i do enjoy checking out things outside of that that is not uh music that i exclusively listen to and a lot of this i have not even no no even ink, no inkling of any concept of even knowing that this sort of stuff exists um so yeah it's it's definitely a fun journey i don't mind doing just rock and metal mostly but i i do enjoy uh, checking out things that are not rock and metal occasionally. Sort of like a palate cleanse. Just checking out some more uh, different timbres, different textures, different ideas. Um, so yeah, do you want that as well? <laughs> or do you just want this to continue to be primarily rock and metal? Let me know. Maybe we'll have a chamber week in the future. All right, there's also a description box with some links adjacent to the channel if you're interested in Discord server or Patreon campaign. And uh, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Those buttons are there under the description. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC with what genre is this week? And hopefully that's going to be a fun ride. All right, until next time, remember to be critical and not cynical of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.